You click on a website and somehow it loads instantly. You stream a video without buffering. You send a message that reaches someone on the other side of the planet in milliseconds. The internet just works like magic. But behind all of this seamless connectivity is one company you've probably never heard of, quietly controlling more of the internet than you might think possible. Today, we're going to explore how Cloudflare became the invisible backbone of the modern web, and why that should probably concern you a little bit. Picture the internet as a massive highway system connecting every city, town, and house in the world. Now imagine if one company controlled most of the traffic lights, road signs, and toll booths on those highways. That's essentially what Cloudflare does for the internet. They don't own the roads themselves, but they control so much of the infrastructure that makes traffic flow smoothly that they'll become indispensable. Cloudflare started in 2009 with a simple idea. Make websites faster and safer. The founders, Matthew Prince, Michelle Zatlin, and Lee Holloway noticed that websites were slow, frequently crashed, and constantly got attacked by hackers. They thought that they could solve these problems by creating a network of servers around the world that would act like a protective shield and speed boost for websites. Think of it like this. Imagine you run a pizza shop, but instead of customers coming directly to your little store, they first stop at a hundred other pizza distribution centers scattered around the world. These distribution centers already have your pizza ready to go, so customers get their food faster. They also have security guards who check each customer to make sure that they're not troublemakers. That's basically what Cloudflare does for websites. When you type in a web address, you're not actually connecting directly to that website's server. Instead, you're probably connecting to one of Cloudflare's servers first. Cloudflare has built a massive network of data centers in over 275 cities across more than 100 countries. These data centers act as intermediaries, storing copies of website content and filtering out malicious traffic before it reaches the actual website. This system, called the Content Delivery Network, or CDN, makes websites load faster because you're getting content from a server that's geographically closer to you. If you're in New York trying to access a website whose main server is in Tokyo, Cloudflare can serve you the content from their New York data center instead of making your requests travel halfway around the world. But Cloudflare doesn't just make websites faster, they also protect them from attacks. Every day, millions of hackers, bots, and malicious actors try to overwhelm websites with fake traffic, steal information, or inject malicious code. Cloudflare acts like a bouncer at a club, checking every visitor before they're allowed in. They use machine learning and pattern recognition to identify suspicious behavior and block it out before it reaches the actual website. Here's where things get interesting though, and maybe even a little concerning. Cloudflare has grown so large and become so good at what they do that a huge portion of the internet now relies on their services. We're talking about roughly 20% of all web traffic flowing through Cloudflare's network. That includes major websites like Discord, Shopify, and millions of smaller sites. To understand just how powerful this makes Cloudflare, let's look at what happens when they have problems. In July of 2022, Cloudflare experienced a configuration error that lasted just 27 minutes. But in those 27 minutes, huge chunks of the internet became inaccessible. Websites went down, online services stopped working, and millions of people suddenly couldn't access their favorite sites. It was like someone had turned off a major highway system during rush hour. And this wasn't the first time either. Similar outages have happened multiple times now, each one demonstrating just how much of the internet depends on this one single company. When Cloudflare sneezes, the internet catches a cold. But Cloudflare's influence goes far beyond just hosting and protecting websites. They also run one of the world's largest DNS services. DNS, or Domain Name System, is like the internet's phone book. When you type google.com in your browser, DNS is what translates that human-readable name into the numerical IP address that computers actually use to find websites. Cloudflare's DNS service, which uses the easy-to-remember IP address 1.1.1.1, has become increasingly popular because it's fast and promises not to log your browsing activity. Millions of people have configured their devices to use Cloudflare's DNS, which means Cloudflare can see what websites those people are trying to visit, even if those websites don't use Cloudflare's other services. This creates an interesting situation. Cloudflare can see a huge amount of internet traffic from multiple angles. They can see it when they're protecting and accelerating websites, and they can see it when they're helping people find those websites in the first place. It's like being both the highway system and the GPS service that tells people which roads to take. Now, Cloudflare generally uses this power responsibly. They've positioned themselves as champions of internet freedom and privacy. They've refused to cooperate with authoritarian governments trying to censor the internet, and they provided free services to journalists, activists, and nonprofits. They've even gone to court to fight for their customers' rights. But the concentration of so much internet infrastructure in the hands of one company creates inherent risks. 
What if Cloudflare's leadership changes and decides to use their power differently? What if they're acquired by a company with different values? What if governments pressure them to comply with censorship or surveillance requests? These aren't just theoretical concerns. We've already seen glimpses of what can happen when Cloudflare exercises its power. Back in 2017, they terminated services for the neo-Nazi website, The Daily Stormer, after it published offensive content about a victim of the Charlottesville attack. While many people agreed with the decision, it highlighted that Cloudflare has the power to effectively remove websites from the internet. The CEO, Matthew Prince, acknowledged this dilemma in a blog post at the time, writing that he was deeply uncomfortable with the decision and that it's important that what we did today is not setting a precedent. But the precedent was already set. Cloudflare had demonstrated that they could and would make editorial decisions about what content deserves to exist on the internet. This power extends far beyond individual websites. Because so much of the internet relies on Cloudflare's infrastructure, they have the ability to see patterns in global internet traffic. They can detect cyber attacks, monitor internet outages, and observe how information spreads online. This gives them insights into everything from political movements to economic trends. Cloudflare has also expanded far beyond their original mission. They now offer cloud computing services competing with Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. They provide email security, video streaming, and even help companies build and deploy applications. With each new service, they become more deeply embedded in the internet's infrastructure. The company has been transparent about their growth and influence, regularly publishing reports about internet trends and threats. They've also open sourced many of their technologies and contributed to internet standards. But transparency and good intentions don't eliminate the fundamental problem of concentration. The internet was designed to be decentralized, with no single point of failure. The idea was that if one part of the network went down, traffic would route around it. But as companies like Cloudflare have grown, we've inadvertently created new centralization points. We've traded the internet's original resilience for convenience and performance. And this isn't necessarily Cloudflare's fault. They've succeeded by solving real problems and providing valuable services. Website owners choose to use Cloudflare because it makes their sites faster, more secure, and more reliable. Internet users benefit from faster loading times and better protection from malicious content. But success in the technology industry often leads to concentration of power. The same network effects that make Cloudflare's services more valuable as more people use them also make it harder for competitors to challenge their position. When everyone is using the same service, it becomes the default choice, which attracts even more users. Other companies have tried to compete with Cloudflare, but none have achieved the same scale of influence. Amazon's CloudFont and Google's CloudCDN are significant players, but they're primarily focused on serving their cloud computing customers rather than being the internet's infrastructure for everyone. The regulatory response has been limited. Unlike social media companies or search engines, CDN providers like Cloudflare operate mostly in the background. Most people don't even know they exist, let alone understand their influence over internet infrastructure. This invisibility has allowed them to grow without the scrutiny that other tech giants face. Some experts argue that we need a new approaches to internet infrastructure that reduce dependency on single companies. Ideas include government-run CDNs, cooperative networks owned by groups of websites, or new technologies that make it easier for smaller companies to compete with giants like Cloudflare. Others suggest that the current system, while imperfect, is working well enough. They point out that Cloudflare has generally been a responsible steward of their power and that the benefits of their service outweigh the risks of concentration. The truth is probably somewhere in between. Cloudflare has made the internet faster, safer, and more accessible for millions of websites and billions of users, but they've also created a new kind of internet choke point that didn't exist before. Whether this trade-off is worth it depends on your perspective and your tolerance for risk. What's clear though is that Cloudflare's influence over the internet is likely to continue growing. They've built a business model that benefits from network effects, where their services become more valuable as more people use them. They've also positioned themselves as essential infrastructure, the kind that's very difficult to replace once it's in place. For now, we're all passengers on Cloudflare's internet highway, mostly unaware that we're depending on their infrastructure every time we browse the web. The ride has been smooth so far, but it's worth remembering that we're trusting one company with an awful lot of your digital lives. So, let's recap this whole digital dependency adventure. The internet feels like magic, but it's actually run by companies that you've never heard of. Cloudflare became the internet's invisible traffic controller by making websites faster and safer, but now they control so much internet infrastructure that when they hiccup, huge chunks of the web go dark. They're generally the good guys, but putting this much power in one company's hands is like letting one person hold all the keys to every building in the city. Now go browse the internet with the knowledge that you're probably using Cloudflare services right now, whether you know it or not. Just try not to think about it too hard.